So the first panel, building your brand. And uh, we have some excellent panelists with us. We've got man one. We've got Leah Titus from Homebrew Agency. We've got Heidi Johnson from Hijinx PR. And we've got Ricky from Parlor Social. Excellent. Thank you guys for joining. This is going to be fun. So, um, you know, it's interesting because um, some would argue that branding and marketing via social media uh, today with technology putting the power in your hands, um, that, you know, that that's a, that's a great thing and it is, right? Um, uh, however, right? There is um, more channels than ever. There's a lot of pressure to post all the time, right? I mean, fun fact, uh, the average tenure for a CMO at a publicly traded company today is 19 months. 19 months. So if they can't do it, how can we? <laughs> right? So uh, we're all artists on some level. Uh, Ricky, I'm so great, great, grateful that you were able to join us today on our panel. And are you, are you live? One, are two, you hot? One, two, one, two. There Thanks for having me. All right. We got, we got action. Um, and I'm so grateful that you're on the panel as a musician because I, I thought it would be good to mix it up to get different perspectives um, and uh, to, to talk about some of the challenges and some of the opportunities that we have. Um, what, you know, as you go about building your brand and marketing what you and Des do with Parlor Social, um, you know, talk just a little bit about some of the, 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 the struggle that you have around building your brand today. Well, like you said, I mean, there's a lot of platforms available for us directly um, for the artists. And I always say it's a gift and a curse because, yes, now we have direct access to, to um, the consumer. Right. But on the other hand, I mean, it always... You know, it takes us away from the actual art, from creating art, because you got to spend time promoting yourself. You got to spend time branding yourself. You got to spend time choosing the right pose, the right selfie, the right. <laughs> so it's, 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 uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge, but you have to do it. You have to. You can't deny the power of social media. You cannot deny it, because at the end of the day, when you're talking to the first thing that, that when you present your music, your art, or anything that you do, when you present to the person who can actually fund it, the first thing they're going to do is go to your social media. So they're going to look at your numbers. They're going to look at your, your brand. They're going to see if your brand matches what they're looking for. So you got to be very careful with how you portray yourself on social media as well. Every post counts. Every single post counts. And you know, we've been on social media for, yes, I mean, since MySpace. But every day I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Oh, this post worked. Oh, that didn't work. Why did this work and why did that work? Was it the time? Was it, was it the proximity of the subject on the picture? Was it the colors? Was it? Right. So you got to self-analyze what you're posting as well. You got to understand what your fan base is um, gravitating to what, what they're engaging, why are they engaging on certain posts and why What not. I really appreciate about what you're saying is that what you're getting at is having a strategic approach, Yeah. right? Yes. And I feel like, um, speaking for myself, right, um, you know, there is a lot of pressure to, to put content out there. And quite honestly, like, I'm not all, I always feel like, sometimes I feel like strategy is a luxury I can't afford, right? Yeah. You know, and yet at the same time, you know, to I understand the value of trying to clearly define my objective and then figure out the strategy by which I'm going to accomplish that objective. And then you figure out the tactics by which you can mo you can mobilize your strategy to achieve your objectives. Right. Correct. And so, um, you know, it sounds like you're ahead of me in terms of being able to be strategic and you're mindful of that. Yeah, it's 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 also looking at in the lens of, again, your consumer. It's also looking at the lens of the people who are, who are looking at you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so you got you to kind of always try to back off from the artist and put your social media hat, put your different hats, obviously, that you know, we have to wear 
nowadays. Yes. But don't forget to put the hat of the consumer as well. Right, right. Because you got to know what they're, what they're looking from you. Not everyone is, not everyone is engaged for you, with you for the th actual thing that you want to sell. Right. Some of them may be just because of your, you know, your spiritual view, your, your mindset. Maybe there's, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people who follow us are just, they follow us because they, they, they are inspired by our, our marriage. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then they discover our music. Oh, these two are, they're married and they make music together. Let me listen to their music, you know? So you got you to gotta, you gotta, um, understand, you know, where the consumer is coming from and try to angle right. that. It's not just one angle. Right. Man One, how do you approach, you know, uh, being strategic in what you do and being aware of your fans and your collectors online, knowing that they're not all the same? Um, well, one of the things first is that I, I, I know that I don't know everything, you know? And, Smart um, man. I also <laughs> know that everyone who says they know doesn't know everything. Um, I'll just talk about, like, for example, on Instagram, um, when it first started coming out, everyone was like, oh, this is the best thing ever because now you can see behind the artist, right? You can not just see his art, but you can see, you know, how they spend their day and they're documenting, you know, other aspects of their life than just the art. So now you get to really know the artist, right? And that was like the big thing. Um, then last week I read an article about if, you ha if you're an artist and you have an Instagram with, f with photos of your family and selfies and your dog, delete it and start a new one with just only pictures of your art, right? So it's like, okay, so who's right or who's wrong? Well, it depends on, on who you are as an artist and what you do and what you believe in. Um, I mean, I think, Ricky, you're right. Um, we're talking directly to the consumer now, which is awesome, um, but it's also um, scary, especially for an artist, because as an artist, you want to create your art and not be influenced by, you know, your fans necessarily, right? You want to think you're creating out of your own head, not like, well, I'm going to create this so that that person will buy it, you know? Um, but there are people who are marketing that way, you know? Um, for me, I just, um, I, I enjoy social media. Um, and even though it's a crucial part of my business, it isn't my business, you know? Um, a few days ago, a few, maybe some of you guys noticed that Instagram was down and Facebook was down and the whole world was ending, <laughs> and everyone joined Twitter, <laughs> and um, that was just a, like, imagine, that was just like a few hours in one day. Like, how scary is it in the, the, where, the moment that we're living in where people were freaking the hell out because, you know, Instagram and Facebook were down. Right? It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was like, you know, everyone's going to jump off the cliff, <laughs> you know? Um, and I tell people, you know, um, I make a living full-time as an artist. I have been doing so since 1994, full-time as an artist. If you guys remember 1994. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, thank you. It is an accomplishment, I guess. <laughs> um, and believe it or not, back then, there wasn't Instagram. There wasn't Facebook. There wasn't even MySpace. There wasn't even Windows 95. <laughs> so how, did, how the hell did I make a living? You know, I don't know. Um, you know, I've always just tried to put myself out there and do stuff. Um, you know, the thing now, right, influencers and everything, um, you know, when these brands contact you now, they don't even look at your art. They look at your followers, you know. Yeah. So I don't get a lot of gigs because I only have 8,000 followers, you know. And I have friends who have 80,000 followers, but they can't make a dollar because they don't know how. And it's like, don't ask me how many followers I, I have. Why don't you ask me, how are you able to make a living as an artist with only 8,000 followers, <laughs> you know? Because uh, there's more to it than just, than just the, the social media. That's the way I, I view it. Right. Social media for me is just one aspect of it, um, but there's many components, you know? I think the most important thing is relationships. I think having relationships with collectors, with clients, with other artists, um, to me, that has been what's taken me to the next level. It's always been about relationship. And the sad part about social media is that people um, are losing that touch, that one-on-one that -on -one touch with people mm -hmm. and losing the relationship. So, I mean, I focus on the relationship part of it. Yeah. Uh, Heidi, you work with so many different artists. Uh, I was so excited to have you on the panel because you sort of sit at a nexus, a crossroads, uh, as a publicist who works with artists and galleries and shows. Um, 
you know, can you wax poetic for a minute about this uh, in terms of what you advise artists? Yeah, I mean, obviously social media is incredibly important right now. It's, it's, your, it's your link to collectors, to potential gigs, to the public. Um, but I do think that we've gotten to a point where, because I work with artists, specifically artists, are putting all their eggs in that basket. And <clears throat> I think it's a disservice. And I also think when you get to, you know, I do think that you have to be able to manage your social media time and have some strategy. But the strategy, the, the tricky part is the strategy has to be organic. And it has to be from the artist. Because I, I find that the, the, the social media that does the best is when it, it feels like you get direct access to an artist. And you get a real idea of who they are as an artist. Um, so I think you know, being strategic but organic in your post is important. I also think repetition is important. You can't just be like, this week I'm going to get into social media and post a bunch for a week and then drop it for a month. If it if it means you pick one image um, a, a day for a month and load it up into a Hootsuite or whatever just to get it done, I would do that. Just so you're constantly having a flow on your social, but you're also not bogged down with posting all the time because that will take up time from you being creative. It will also affect you because you'll start looking at like what people are liking and oh maybe I shouldn't do that because they're not liking it, you know. So that's one aspect, and I think each platform has a different carries different merit. I think social media, obviously right now, um, Instagram is the place for artists. I think, you know, Facebook is fine for events and getting the word out that way. And then Twitter, you know, if you actually want to have an opinion. <laughs> but, um, and then, you know, for a lot of you, uh, Patreon is, is a site that I think you should be exploring. And it's a great means for you to get your art up there and have fans actually support your art on a, on a monthly basis. Basis. And I think it's an interesting site, and it's a it's a cool model um, that is sort of spurned out of the need from from Instagram of people artists being able to uh, really connect with their fans and have their fans really support them. Because you know, I mean, through the history of art, there's always been the artist, and there's always been the patron, and. It is, we, as a patron, it is my job to support the arts. And so I think sites like uh, Patreon have found a means for people to start supporting the artists that they like. Because not every artist is getting, you know, big licensing deals or big walls that, you know, pay them their rent for the next four months. So you have to find a means. There's tons, you're entertaining people all day on Instagram with your art. Why not have them? you know, give you a donation or whatever to sub help support your art. So I think that that's really important. So social media and then having a real clear plan of, of the type of art that you do, where you want to be, you need to uh, investigate every gallery in the city that you live in, figure out which galleries you like, where you would like to show, um, and start going to those shows, reaching out to those gallerists, and just being on the scene is very important. And, um, and also like reaching out to curators and advisors, asking people to come do studio visits. That's their job. Curators, advisors, their job is to go to studio visits all the time. So don't be shy to ask. Just put it out there. And if there's someone that you would like to come to your studio, just ask them. I, I guarantee 60% of the time they'll come. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, there's a couple of different things you need to do, but, and, and then, you know, the galleries that you like, really trying to get into as many group shows as you can, um, I think is really important as well. And then, I mean, we can talk about, you know, getting other gigs, corporate jobs, things like that, but that's a whole other sure. sort of beast, but yeah. Well, Leah, um, you know, you have an interesting um, life because you're an artist, uh, but you also work uh, as a digital marketer for a digital marketing agency uh, here in town called Homebrew. And you guys do a lot of interesting work with movie studios, promoting movies and stuff. So what's fascinating is that, you know, you have, I'm guessing, decent budgets coming from the studios to do cool work for them. Yeah, and yet you're an artist, and um, you know, uh, you know. I'm guessing as an artist, your <laughs> social media uh, bu uh, budget is uh, not as great as Universal's. Um, so, uh, but yet, you know, you um, have to work with these tools at a high level in your day-to-day -day work. So, um, you know, one of the things that I find frustrating about these tools is that it feels like they're changing all the time, right? 
Yeah, right, and they are. I'm not going crazy. They really are. Okay. Um, what are we to do? I mean, how the hell do we manage this constant change? Because it's hard to be strategic. It's hard to be consistent when the goalposts get moved all the time, right? So how are we meant to keep up with this change in this world? What advice do you have for us? Um, I would say... Um, I would say that the most important thing is being authentic and being consistent. And yes, it's going to change a little bit. Like he was saying, maybe now you're supposed to have an Instagram where your feed is all um, art. Well, I would say then try out Instagram stories where Instagram stories is your more personal life. Because it is going to keep changing and that's, that's not going to change. The only thing that's consistent is it will constantly be a moving goalpost. But what's important is what he was talking about, the one-on-one -on -one connections how you're connecting with your audience. Maybe it's gonna be a different platform in two or three years, but as long as you keep, keep at it and keep authentic and basically keep going after your audience, finding your fans, finding those niche um, people, it doesn't necessarily matter what platform it's gonna be on. What matters is your representation on it. Does that make sense? It, it, it does make sense. Um, Yes, the, please jump in. The Instagram stories, which have, you know, I'd say in the last year and a half or something, have been the, the new part of Instagram. And I, I do think those are very interesting in the sense that I think that you should keep your page all art. And like you said, do, sto do stories and make them personal. Talk about, you know, not, you don't have to get super personal, but, you know, <laughs> about your process, about what you do, about you going to art openings, things like that. From my own experience, having uh, worked on a, a couple of different social media campaigns, I have found that the stories bump up your yeah. followers like incredibly quickly. Now, why is that though? Right. Well, there are people who just want to watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have a whole, I have a whole like, spiel on like Instagram stories. Cable, <laughs> it's it's true, like the it's new cable TV access. now. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, but Leo, you have some data about this. Yeah. yeah, so there's actually 500 million people on Instagram stories every day. And Instagram currently is favoriting Instagram stories over the feed. So you'll probably notice a lot of artists or influencers will actually put a new post on their feed featuring their art mm -hmm. and then post about it in their stories yep. and maybe cover part of the picture to be like, hey, go check it out in my feed, please, because the Instagram story is getting delivered much more readily to people. It's incredible. And yeah. um, what's surprising and like a little tip that even I was shocked when I would play around with my own Instagram stories is when you hashtag a story, it, like for instance, hashtag LAR, Los Angeles, et cetera, et cetera, um, you can get into like the Los Angeles story, so it starts serving your Instagram story to everybody else that's like randomly like you know sitting in line looking at. I'm gonna look at LA art today, exactly. and it will like, hundreds of people will see it, and then they can go follow your page from there. So I am a big proponent of it. Me too. <laughs> it's the it's the hot thing at this moment. Yeah. I mean, it could change, you know, in a year. It will change in a year. But as of right now, it's a great place to kind of show like the yeah. the inner side of yeah. you, mm -hmm. especially if it's something like that's not necessarily like perfect, aesthetically pleasing, yeah. but it's you. And you wanna say like, hey, this is it me making my real. art. This yeah, is yeah. me with my dog. This is me <clears throat> traveling or, hey, I'm gonna be in Los Angeles. Hey, I'm gonna be in New York. That's the place to tell your followers to come see you and to basically show them the behind the mask. Right. Okay, I have a question. So one of the um, things I was annoyed about promoting this conference, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> <laughs> Which apparently I was reasonably successful. Look at this amazing crowd, yeah. uh, it's phenomenal. <laughs> um, so, okay, and uh, you know, like I'm an old school guy, like, you know, f back w when I came up, I mean, there were three channels. There was print, there was radio, there was television. Like that's, those are my roots, right? Um, so I wanna create a, an ad right, with the name and the time and the, you know, some text on the image. And I go to post it, and I immediately get a warning that says, images with text do not perform. But Why the hell you, not? Then you go ahead and you select manual review, and then you let Facebook do See, a manual review. See, this is why you're on review. the panel. Yeah. <laughs> or you cheat the system and you put the first frame of your Facebook or Instagram That's story right. without text, and then it immediately goes into text as soon as they hit play. Well, see, I'm glad I'm at this panel at <laughs> this right. conference. This is, uh, this is really enlightening uh, for me. Um, but look, I mean, we're all swamped. We're all busy, okay? Like, one of the, the things that was so frustrating, you know, like, well, I got into a rhythm where I would try to post something in the morning, 
That way I, I didn't have to worry about it in the day. I was like, okay, I got my one up for the day, what have you. Um, you know, you know, Heidi, you mentioned Hootsuite, like, you know, and, and Ricky, you talk about being strategic, right? So being strategic is part about organizing yourself, right? Or managing your time accordingly, yeah. right? So um, tools that we have, like Hootsuite, what, talk a little bit about those resources, because we don't have fat budgets, we don't have a lot of time, you know, how can we work smarter, Right, I when think, it comes to being strategic I mean, in social media. I'm, you know, I'm a person who, for some artists, I do their social media for them because they just don't, and I know the amount of time and effort that goes into it, you know? So it's, it could take up, you know, a yeah. good part of your morning, you know, um, trying to write the first thing. So I would say you sort of figure out what you want to post, you know, sort of have a game plan, whether it be like you're working on a specific series of work right now and you want to like every day post a little bit about that series of work. If you have an upcoming show, close-ups building up to the show of the work. Try to think of like things that'll be a little bit more engaging and fun and get people to keep coming back to look mm -hmm. at the page. And then I would highly recommend if you don't want to have to be bogged down for hours at a time doing social media, spend one day that you're gonna sit down and do your social media for whether it be a week ahead, two weeks ahead, a month ahead, load it into Hootsuite. Thank God Hootsuite posts to Instagram now because it didn't before. <laughs> and you still had to do that manually. So, yeah. however, I do like to still, I use things like Hootsuite, but I also believe in a more organic approach. I also think I'm gonna tell you the most important part of social media, and I think that you'll agree, beyond the stories right now, is mutual engagement. And so a lot of times big companies and stuff, they load everything into Hootsuite, but they're not engaging back. So my job, uh, like I do the PR for the LA Art Show, and you know they were having a slow uh, rise. They weren't getting as many followers. And then I got in there and just on the daily for a month, was doing the stories and engaging back, liking, responding, and the numbers went up by 10,000 in a month. And it was great because we were engaged. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that, like you mentioned, you know, on Instagram stories, you can do the polls, you mm -hmm. can do that, you know, question and answer. And that, maybe it's one day a month where you're like, I'm gonna sit down and answer questions my fans have. Exactly. And that goes a long way. Absolutely. They wanna feel like, they, they not only wanna support you, but they wanna feel like they're connected to you. Like they're following you, they're vested in you. They want to know what's going on. They want you to talk back to them. Yeah, that's very you important. Um, thankfully for us, again, we're, we're two, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so right. it's not all one or the other. It's both of us. We, we, we both have, you know, our own personal accounts, yes. and we also have the parlor social account. Yes. So if I'm, you know, busy, you know, working on a song, and she, you know, she has time, you know, we, we could engage with the fans. So we kind of split it. But that part, like you said, is really, really important. Do you have a routine, a schedule, or does it just sort I've of happen noticed, organically? I've noticed, again, it's ever-changing, and it's always finding out what works. And I've noticed for the last couple of months, I've been posting once in the morning, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm getting more out of it. Right. Um, because when, when, when um, our followers engage with us, we have the entire day to, you know, get back to them or whatever. Yeah. And then the next, and it kind of, you kind of think ahead of, like you said, you, you got to think ahead of what you want to post also. It can't, it can't be, some, well, sometimes. It just can't be like that spur of the moment. You have sure. to think of, okay, last today I posted about my show. Today, I'm not going to post about the show. I'm going to post about something, you know, representing my brand. Mm -hmm. So for every, you know, I've read somewhere, for every post that you post about, that you try to sell something, try to have four or five that you're actually um, posting about your brand, not always trying to sell something to the, yes, to the followers. Because right. right. then, they, then they disengage. You're always asking something yeah. from them. Right. Um, well, I remember hearing a statistic not too long ago that, um, quite, that basically boiled down to the majority of of consumers today uh, distrust uh, paid advertising, right? Which sort of ri rises to, yeah. you know, social media. But I get what you're getting at is, I think the same point, which is like most of us don't like the hard sell, right? Most of us like the soft sell that, you know, it feels like it's a more human approach. I call it a human approach. Yeah. Shout out human. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, that kind of, 
um, relatable tone and messaging. Is yeah, key. and also what I found works also, um, like, you know, if we have a show, I'll post about the show, I'll put the flyer up of the show, and then a day or two later, I'll put a video up, mm -hmm. you know, talking about the video, and by the way, yeah, our next show is, you know, this date. Right, call so, to action, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you put, it, you put it in there, you know, slightly so that people still, you still remind people about it, but mm -hmm. you're, you're, the purpose of the post is not to sell something, it's, it's to actually, you know, yes. show, you know, entertainment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So that helps too, not always. Yeah, man. So I wanted to say something about uh, marketing <clears throat> social media, right? Um, we're always thinking about from the camera that way, right? Like, like you're posting on your phone going out to the world. But there's also the real world and how do they find you, right? And um, this goes back to what I was saying earlier, having grown up before uh, social media, um, how do people discover you in the real world, right? And so one of the things that I've noticed uh, recently is like all the like street artists and muralists and stuff will put their Instagram page on their, you know, their at whatever on the mural. Um, and I have a couple of things to say about that. First of all, back in the day, that was like, if you put your website on there, people used to diss you, you know, like, oh man, you're a toy. You know? <laughs> Putting your website on there, you know, and you're whatever. I used to put my pager number on my murals back in the day. <laughs> no joke. And people would call me. Usually it wasn't cops either. Um, so, you know, it's cool to do that. I don't have a problem with that. People put their, their website on there or whatever. But make it legible so that people can actually find you. Like, I've seen people, okay, you're doing a mural, this, especially a lot of these street artists now, they're like stenciling the entire mural, but they freehand their Instagram tag. Like, dude, you just stenciled like, like a giant <laughs> wall. Can you create a stencil so that people can like drive by and actually read your, your at, you know? So, I mean, make it easy for people to find you in the real world is kind of what, what, um, what I want to say, you know, is because like it's still, we still live in the real world, believe it or not. Um, and so, Barely. you know, when people do live art at, a, at an event, you know, have like a, like a little card sticking out on the top of your easel where it has your website or your Instagram or, you know, wear a shirt that has your, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, I always tell people just like when you're at an event or when you're doing some public art or something like that, make it easy for people to find you, um, you know, if they're just driving by. You know, because a lot of times they're not going to stop and, and ask you what you're doing, but they'll take a picture. I've seen some really smart guys on the scaffolding uh, that, that they're using or their lift to put a banner with their whole, you know, that's awesome. It's like, you know, someone's gonna take a picture of you painting and then, oh, guess what, there's the guy, you know? So the, the worst feeling on social media is uh, when you have, um, this has happened to me quite a few times, when you have like these big, big celebrities stand in front of your mural and they don't tag you, right? Oh man, it pisses you off because it's like, you're, like a million likes later, <laughs> no one's giving you a shout out, you know? So, you know, try to make it easy for people to find you. As well. Right, right, right. And people still wanna yeah. feel like, you know, like old school, like they found you. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Right. Like it's like, oh, I found this cool. So it's still that. They yeah, they still want to feel like they right. discovered you, even if you have a bazillion followers. Right, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Leah. I was just going to say that I feel like that also goes a little bit more about finding people on the digital side too, because I will definitely find an artist and share it to, you know, my other artist friends and be like, check this person out. And a lot of the time, when I, the way I find them is like through collaborations, digital or artists, like literally giving a shout out to another artist on their page. Um, or somebody will hand me their phone and be like, check out Polly Noor. She's doing a one every day this whole month. She's doing a one piece of a story. So I'm like, Bet, you better believe it. I'm going to go back every day and check out what's happening the next day and send it to all my artist friends and be like, tune in. Yeah. We're, we're here for it. Yeah, totally. The other day when, I'm sorry, man. Business go ahead. cards still work, by the way. <laughs> and also, I mean, we're talking a lot about social media right now, but um, email marketing, and I know it seems yes. like we're all inundated with emails and all of that, but emails are currency. And you need to collect as many emails as you can, and you need to get on a regular newsletter. Uh, uh, e-blast um, and I don't mean every week you can do it once a month or whatever right. but just sort of updates of what you're doing and all that that will just help everything else it ties everything else um, into it it's from your social media to everything that you're doing so it's always important to collect as many emails as you can eventually I mean we're definitely going down the road that email will be like robocalls eventually but right now it's still okay 
<laughs> still works. <laughs> still working right now. Ricky, but, you, you were going to say something? Yeah, because yeah. To, to, to your point, you know, social media is ever changing. The one thing that never changes is your email. So you, you still have direct contact yeah. to those yeah. people that right. want to be engaged, that want, want to know what's going on with you. The Not everyone goes to social media every day to check your posts, but yeah. at least if you send out email newsletters, then at least they'll know what's going on. Oh, I haven't checked my social media, but at least I know, uh, uh, you know, I still know what's going on with my favorite artist. And right. And it's a, it's a fine line because, you know, if you don't really know the person but you want to get connected to them, email's a little bit less intrusive because mm. I find that sometimes if people te get your number and they text you without permission, it's not, that's not always the coolest route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shifting gears just a little bit, um, you know, Leah and I were talking the other day and she said something that was really interesting. Um, and we were sort of riffing on our panel and things that we wanted to talk about. And, uh, you know, she sort of said uh, to me, and I, you know, not speaking for Leah uh, here, but, um, you know, she said, you know, uh, to, get, to get inspired, I follow, uh, you know, other interesting characters on social media that give me ideas for my stuff. So, Leah, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I was talking about how, um, again, with Instagram stories, there's some people that I follow, like a badass barber it's called Stay Gold. She's, I'm, I go to a barber, but she's not my barber. Um, she's just a really cool chick that's like covered in tattoos and is always showing like what city she's going to. And I will sit there and I watch her videos on, you know, cutting hair. And I have, really, I'm not an artist that cuts hair whatsoever, but I'm so intrigued by her as a person, just as an interesting and unique character that I will go and I will, I, I'm here to witness it. Like I want to see what she's up to. Um, and same with a lot of other artists I follow. Um, for instance, Squid Liquor. Yeah. Um, Lolo. Yeah, she does a lot of really cool stuff where she'll, you know, go on Instagram stories and just talk about the podcast she's listening to. She'll talk about, you know, what city she's coming to next, or do Instagram stories, polls, etc. That really make me feel like I'm engaged. And so, just stuff like that, where I'm like interested as a person, not necessarily as that particular form of art, or sometimes both. Because I think you have to look at it. Um, Yes, as a, as a means to sell product, but also this is the new way of building your fan base. And fans connect to you not only by you just, you know, throwing out an image every day, but like getting to know you. And I'm going to call out someone like Jorge Gutierrez, Jorge who, in the his house. social media, he's a character, and he talks about stuff that's going on in the world, and his social media is super engaging. Yes, he shows his art, and he talks about production and all of those things, but he also talks about what's going on in the world from his point of view, which is, you know, um, you know, it's, it's thought-provoking, but also humorous, and so he's like a fun guy to follow. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, right. you definitely, you need to be a well-rounded, it can't just be, like, that's what I'm saying, like, it has to be be organic it has to be you you know it just it just right. has to be well you know? one of the things that I want to point out um, and um, you know part of the reason why I wanted to do this panel um, because I think that there is this can you know if you if you read Fast Company magazine if you read some of these periodicals um, or if you listen to you know uh, the mass media in some ways, and there are 10 steps for this, and there are five steps for that, and the quick fixes here, and the silver bullets there. I mean, it's all bullshit. I mean, the, the reason I opened up this panel with the factoid that the average tenure for a CMO at a publicly traded company right now being 19 months is to actually provide the, real, the level set around what's real. Then what's real is, Building your brand today, whether you are a Fortune 100 company or a struggling artist, is fucking hard. It's hard. There's just no way around it. Um, you, know, you know, there's a new app every day, it feels like, a new tool every day, and the promise is oh so intoxicating. The promise is oh so exciting that, oh, this app is going to be the silver bullet that gets me over the top in terms of my marketing or build, building my brand. The reality is that it is hard work no matter who you are, that it, 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 that's why it's called work, right? Because it is difficult and um, it is a struggle for anyone no matter what. And so, you know, hopefully, you know, through talking about all of this, you know, together, there's some camaraderie around the fact that we're all struggling with the same stuff. You know, I don't care who you are or what your followers are, it is a challenging time. There's so much noise out there. 
you know? And by the way, I don't know if you guys have seen the um, uh, documentary about that horrific uh, fire festival uh, debacle. Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, one of the intriguing things about that was, uh, you know, when they released the orange tile, right? Now, of course, they released the orange tile in mass because they had, you know, these quote unquote influencers with millions of followers. But the reason it was an orange tile was because they know that people are scrolling through quickly and it's all just noise. It's noise. It's noise. And all of a sudden this this breath of fresh air, this quiet moment of an orange square, orange tile popped up, and it stopped people in their tracks, right? So the old saying about when people zig, you zag, and the whole story about differentiating in a, in a busy marketplace, some of these basic ideas are still true today, and maybe even more important today than ever, because it is a noisy world, and you need to think about, well, how can I, you know, somehow break through the clutter and, and connect in the noise and uh, create something that's interesting and refreshing, um, but also having realistic expectations about no matter what tool you use, what platform you're on, it is, it is work. It's going to take time and energy. And um, I think that that's why having a strategic approach is, is so critical because it starts to help uh, organize your, your energy. Right, man, you were gonna say something. I was gonna say, you know, there's also a lot of artists who are very introverted, right? I mean, a lot of artists, that's why they do art, because they don't wanna talk to people. <laughs> you wanna sit in your studio and just create and forget about the world. Um, but, and that's okay, you can do that. You can totally live in a cave and, you know, whatever. But if you wanna make money, um, <laughs> then, then there's something that you need to figure out. Um, and so a lot of times I talk to artists who are like, you know, I just can't do social media. I just, I just can't, I don't know how to engage. I don't want to, I just want to paint. I don't, you know, and that's cool. Um, but that's, I think why we're talking here because you need to still find a strategy just because you don't want to do it. Just because you don't like engaging doesn't mean that you're just not going to do it. You know? Because even before social media, it was still hard as yeah. an artist to get noticed. Do you Absolutely. know what I mean? Yeah. You still had to figure out a means to get out there. Yeah. If anything, you have so many means now, you just have to figure it out. But um, I feel like it's always been, the challenge of an artist has always been to be seen. You right. know what I mean? And, and I think that's, that's forever the, the deal. Yeah, you know? it's always, it's a numbers game is the way I look at it. And it's um, the more eyeballs on your art, the more chance of someone wanting to get your art or like your art or follow your art. Um, you know, before we used to have the gallery system and that was pretty much it. So everyone just wanted to get into a gallery. Why was that? It's because the gallery had, they were the gatekeepers, right? They're the ones who had the Rolodex of all the collectors or, or they, they were the ones who, you know, lent, you know, let you go into their space and show. Um, now we don't, you know, even though galleries are still around, it's, tr it's transforming to a whole new place. And now, you know, Instagram could be your gallery or other social media is your gallery. Um, so how do you navigate that, you know? So I think you really need to just, um, like, don't be afraid. If you are an introvert, if you're not that social media, if you don't like to paint your hair beautifully like this, and you just want to be in your room and not be noticed, um, that's cool too, but you have to figure out a, a play. Well, I, I'll, I'll, I'm going to double down on that because uh, I was having this conversation the other day, and I was saying that... Um, it is totally cool for uh, artists to, you know, n not be comfortable with, with marketing. It's totally cool for artists not to be, uh, uh, you know, excited about selling, right? It's totally cool if artists uh, don't want to go uh, sip wine in a white box at a gallery opening on the weekend with a bunch of, you know, rich folks from Beverly Hills that they don't like, okay? It's perfectly fine. What's not fine is being inarticulate about your story. Because at the end of the day, marketing and branding is about telling your story. The, the, the tools, the platforms, those are, just, those are just tools. That's all they are. None of them matter if, if you don't have an articulated Story. Need to, you need to be able to talk about your work. Talk That's about your work. If I work with any artist, the first thing we hammer out is like, what is your work about and why do you do it? And you really need to sit with yourself and figure out what 
what the story is and what's truthful to you. Yeah. Because every person that comes up to you is going to ask you why you do your work or what it's about. Right. And if you can't explain it, why are they going to attach to it? You know? Why do you and exist in this world, right? And why does your art <laughs> exist in this world, right? That's true. And you know, some artists, some artists, some artists put out. You know, I've seen artists write manifestos sure. and they write, you know, uh, you know, sort of really concise um, uh, credos or whatever it is um, to help provide that touchstone around what their art is. But that's the thing more than anything that I feel is the greatest opportunity from a from a brand building perspective. The thing that doesn't cost any money, the thing that that should come completely natural and organic to you is your story and being able to, to tell it. Please. I think the other side to that coin is, because I, I was asking around a couple of my artist friends that have come to me for social media advice before, and I said, what do you think that a lot of artists don't realize or that they get shy about? And she said, you know, her as an artist and a lot of people she knows, they get afraid and shy about it. They're not necessarily, they, they feel like they're tooting their own horn a little too much. They feel like, oh, I'm only talking about me. It's like, people are on your page for your stuff. They want to hear from you. So don't be shy about it. It's your story. Right. Just tell it. Here, here, and I'll add on to that. If you don't tell your story, no one else is going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it, it, it's, 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 there is no, there, there is no shame. I mean, well, you can hire, I guess I you can hire Heidi. <laughs> Sorry. For, for, Sorry, for, Heidi. You meant for free. For free. For free. <laughs> I said no money. She costs money. I Believe it me, depends. I know. I, I get her it bills. Depends. I mean, <laughs> I do have cards. If yeah, I yeah. <laughs> but you know, but you, but but that's the thing, right? Like, um, there, you know, it is interesting that people get shy or get uh, uncomfortable with telling their own story. And yet, I know artists that maybe aren't even that great, but they're successful because they're really good at telling their story. Yeah. The other day, I, I was reading this um, bio about this artist, and um, turns out this artist is deaf and hates. Um, trying to sell his work, right? Because um, he can't go into a gallery and have a conversation with people. Like, just literally can't, especially at a crowded event. I never thought about that and like how social media has really transformed his career. Because now it's like he can communicate with people in a way that he literally couldn't before. You know, so it's also amazing the, the plus side of what social media has done with people with disabilities and with, with artists who have you know, those kind of issues or whatever, it's, it's actually you know, really awesome. I, I think a great example of that is now what's happening with the outsider art movement. Um, the outsider art movement, which has always been sort of a hidden movement because of social media. I mean, there's artists like Helen Ray, who is a, a you know, um, deaf and nonverbal and um, high functioning, but is this incredible artist who for 78 years has been draw drawing these incredible portraits out of Vogue magazine one gallerist happened to see a post um, from the, the group home that she's at, and that gallerist took her on. This woman has flown to New York and met, met with Jerry Salt. It's like, she's on her road. She's being uh, represented by Andrew, um, uh, the guy in New York, Edlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's, it's, it's an amazing story. No one would have ever seen her work without social media. Right. Right. Yeah, so, you know. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, one of the things that I want to make sure that we um, clarify with this panel, because, you know, we, we're talking about a lot, right? So, like, how do we sort of synthesize it and distill it into some key takeaway points, right? Uh, Ricky, you want to say something? Yeah, for me, it's, at the end of the day, just create dope art. Just create dope shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Just hone on, hone on your thing. Just... Have, have your voice, like you say, yeah. create your voice through your own art. And I mean, the social media stuff, yes, it helps, but at the end of the day, you have to have, you have, to have dope stuff, this dope art too. Well, but, but, see, but, they, but see, that is, that gets to the, to, the, to the paradox, right? Because it's like, well, I want to have dope art, but I got them too busy posting. You know, how can I focus on my art? I, you know, I'm so busy, you know, managing my business, you know? Yeah. And, and, Go, sorry. No, no, but I mean, that's the challenge, right? Yeah, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I know sometimes you look at other people's stuff and, you know, it's very hard to not compare yourself. And you're yeah. like, okay, well, this person is 
getting more out of their and their shit is not even okay. We're well, really, <laughs> really. This is what's. This is what people. This is what people want. But at the end of the day, I mean, you do you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. And just be the best you you can. Right. And then the social media stuff, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. You know, invest your time in it. But like I, I've learned throughout the years how to. That's why I only post in the morning now. I'll rarely post in the afternoon because I spend the rest of my day working on my craft. Right. Because I can't, I can't be bothered with. Oh wait, it's one o'clock. Oh, I gotta stop. You know. Yeah. I can't do that. Right. Because I don't have you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> she has business cards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So right. you just, you just have to, you know, put your energy in the right place. Hundred percent. But just make sure that you're fulfilling yourself. You're fulfilling your art. Yeah. And people will come. Yeah. People will. It will I happen. think. Look. So you know, one of the things that I've noticed again and again is that. The most um, seems to be the most popular approach to marketing is what I call ready, fire, aim. Ready, fire, aim. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and that's the problem. And this gets back to what we were saying and what you were saying, Ricky, about being strategic, right? So, you know, ready, aim, fire is what we're supposed to do. Um, and, and what that gets to is having a clear objective about what you're trying to accomplish that day, that week, that month, that year. Um, and you know, the, once you have a defined objective, then you, know, you figure out, okay, well, how do I get there from here? And how are these tools avail, you know, uh, how, can, how can these tools help me? I feel like we jump to the tactics. We jump to the tools. It's like, oh, I wanna market myself. Um, I'm gonna use Instagram. Okay, well, Instagram's a marketing tool, but what are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to say? And how do you think the, you know, the most compelling way to say it is, right? Um, and so, you know, I think that that's one of those things that, A, it doesn't cost money. <laughs> you, know, it co you know, being strategic, thinking about what your objectives are, you know, what story you're trying to tell, and, and being super articulate about what unique voice you have in the world, you know, as an artist, right? And also know about what the reality is, like what you're doing online. Um, and what I mean by that is like um, some people are doing like, well, I want to get my numbers up because, you know, I want to be an influencer, right? I want people to call me and say, hey, you know, uh, we're, we're, we have a new car dropping in your city and we want you to drive it around and put it on your Instagram. Um, I'm not an influencer, but I have friends who are. And it's so funny when they call me and tell me so-and-so, you know, just contacted me and they want me to do this post for a month and blah, 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 right? And they're offering 300 bucks. So this is the reality is what I'm seeing out there is like these so-called you know, influencers, I mean, they're getting offered three to 500 bucks a pop to do something. Now, obviously, if you're Kardashian or something like that, I'm sure it's probably a little bit more than that. But you know, they're- 350. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but you know, but what's happening is, is as you're, this whole influencer thing, right? Well, the, the marketers, they know that too. They know that they're a dime a dozen now. So just because you're gonna get your numbers up or you know, people are gonna reach out to you, don't think you're all of a sudden gonna become a millionaire because people are gonna reach out to you because they're really not. I mean, I worked for some of the biggest companies in the world and they're cheap as hell. You know? They don't wanna pay anything. You know? And that's not gonna change with social, social media. For marketing, they probably wanna pay less. You know? And also, I mean, stop worrying about being an influencer, honestly. Like, you're an artist. That's what you're there for. You're not there to be an... If, if you want to be an influencer, that's a whole other conference. Yeah. <laughs> this is, you're an artist, yeah. and instead of worrying about getting your numbers up so you can have some post, pay to post or all of this, that's you, you're using social media as a tool to show the world what you do and what you're passionate yeah. about. It's not about you selling product, you know? So like, forget the influencer thing. Honestly, my personal opinion, I think the next few years are gonna be very interesting how influencers <laughs> shake down. So focus on your art and make it about your art because you're an artist, not an influencer. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Well, I think that's a great way to end this panel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Thank you guys, Ricky, Thank Heidi, Leah, Man One. Outstanding. Thank you all for that. And um, be sure, guys, to pull them aside and pepper them with lots of questions and get Heidi's business card. All right. All right. <laughs>